Thank you. Thank you, Dibna, for giving me the lesson of not talking quickly. <laughs> Um, th thank you very much, everybody, um, for allowing us to do this project. Thank you to the forum for giving us this opportunity. Um, EPREP, electronic preparation um, for professional practice, is um, not possible without our partners. First of all, uh, the wonderful people that we have sitting here, Betty Higgs, Caroline O'Connor, Eileen O'Leary from um, uh, really teaching and learning from pharmacy, from nursing, and I, after the last comments, better be very quiet that I'm actually a, a medic. <laughs> but I'm a very humble medic. So we're in we're <laughs> <laughs> yes, and I've been beaten up for two hours on the train on the way here. So, so yes, I think we should get the hierarch hierarchical thing back to the 1950s in Cork as well. Um, but thank you also to, to all our collaborators, Peter Cantlin uh, and Josephine Bolland, who is involved with Dibner in NUI Galway, um, Andrew O'Regan down in the University of Limerick at medical school there, um, Geraldina Harnett um, from IT Tralee. It's, it was hell visiting all these places. You can imagine I'd much rather be on the M1. Um, and then we have Walter Cullen at University College Dublin, Anne-Marie Healy from Trinity College Dublin. Uh, so pharmacy, medicine, nursing, medicine, ner uh, medical education, uh, medical education. And our two um, external advisors have been already enormously helpful. One is uh, Mahendra Patel from the Royal Pharmaceutical Society in the UK, who has been involved in the, uh, a pharmacy school in the UK and has gone through the cycle of starting one, working out the competencies, working out the program, and seeing his first cohort go through. And he's already been over to visit and to advise us on the project. And then Anne Pete, who's the Pro Vice Chancellor of Teaching and Learning uh, at the University in Sheffield. Um, and Anne has promised to come over when we um, have a, a teaching and learning conference in Cork, uh, possibly in, in the spring. So what do they do? We have regular teleconferences. It, a, a lot of this is the building of the network. That, the, the first six months has very much been prepa the preparatory work, building the infrastructure. And it does feel as though we've built a very strong network already. So UCL, that because of the, the, the wide distribution of their students, they already use video conferencing as a teaching and learning tool. Um, and it's a site that is going to be used uh, for interprofessional learning with the nurses in Tralee. Uh, NUI Galway, um, Josephine Bolland, as well as working with Dibner, has um, developed software uh, useful for competency mapping. Um, um, they've got a learning technologist who's working with us uh, about digital resource development. UCD is going to be a pilot site, again, <clears throat> for uh, between medicine and pharmacy at TCD. And uh, UCD have got uh, expertise in video conferencing as well. TCD have linked with UCC in the pharmacy. They're, they're developing a new degree in M-Farm instead of the B-Farm. So it, it's really how to deliver the competences which have been given to them by a, a national body. And so um, TCD and UCC are using their, their salary recharge essentially to employ, to, to, to fund a master's student to work on this. Um, ITT have got strength in evaluation of reflective portfolios and is going to be a pilot site for evaluation of those e-portfolios. We'll come to that in a minute. Um, UCC, we're going to develop the clinical scenarios and um, we're going to evaluate the e-portfolio in our own institution. So what is the overview? What have we done so far? What's been the methodology? It's been very much a pragmatic action sort of project. So we set up the executive, we formed as a group, we set up the partner network, and it's now functioning very well. And uh, as Dibna has, has e explained, it's very important to get institutional and individual buy-in before you can really um, devise or deliver anything. Um, we, are, we are identifying the shared competences between pharmacy, nursing, and medicine. These are open national documents, but they've never been uh, 
benchmarked or cross-matched before. And so before we can develop any interprofessional learning between pharmacy and nursing and medicine, we really need to know what are the shared competences so we can essentially show value to all of those students. We have a project assistant uh, working at the moment uh, with me and our team in looking at the shared competences. We are piloting an e-portfolio. We've had help from uh, learning technology. We'll talk about those e-portfolios again in a minute. Um, we've got an administrator. We've got student involvement. We are developing a web presence, which, of course, I was hoping it would be available before today. It's going to be the end of July. Um, and then we're working on digital resources. This just shows that for each of those, there are lots and lots of different things. This is a screenshot of the work plan, which we've done since um, January, February. Um, and so it goes on. So for e-portfolios, there must have been 15 tasks. For competency frameworks, there must have been 12 or 14 tasks, and so on. So we've got to showcase what we've done. Shared competencies, the evaluation of the e-portfolio, student panel, and what has happened or not happened so far with interprofessional learning. So in terms of shared competencies, um, we are, we've addressed um, the priorities of pharmacy, nursing, and medicine. These are the um, cognate bodies. Um, and so we've looked at the shared domains. We've had to divide them into themes, so as a professional, as a practitioner, and as a scholar and scientist. Um, and we've also asked our partners to provide all policies and protocols in respect of agreements, memoranda of understanding or agreements, between the health service and the institutions. In other words, we don't just, or at least we hope, we don't just send students out to be entertained for two or three weeks. We hope that there are some learning um, objectives. We hope that the tutors can help the student deliver on those. There are very few of these. So the shared competences as a professional, these sub-themes here, so we're working on that and we're hoping to be able to publish that, the first shared competency document in Ireland, we're hoping to publish that by the end of the year, and the, uh, the end of this year. And these are the documents that are under review. Now, if I can ask Caroline to talk about ePortfolio because she's the one that knows about this. Thanks, Henry. I'll take that one, thank you. In relation to the e-portfolios, I suppose really this is the platform where we're going to put these competencies, where we're going to put the digital resources, and where we're going to put the reflective portfolio. All of this is going to sit in this particular e-portfolio. We have been looking at, when reviewing the literature from Australia, from Canada, from UK, and uh, we've seen exactly what portfolios are all about in the sense of the traditional paper one was more about collecting, selecting, uh, reflecting, projecting in that. Whereas adding technology to it, we found that it gives a bit more, it gives more depth. We've got more, uh, there's archiving there, there's a, there's a high, very high probability and a very high possibility for students to link their theory and their practice, because we're looking at more of a practice item here, and they're also, their thinking actually increases, their depth of thinking, their critical thinking, that increases also. Uh, there, there's an ideal opportunity for collaborating, and I suppose linking in with Dimna and linking in with other people here, the collaboration aspect of it for the IPA, L, I, P, E, whichever way you want to choose it. Um, and I, that, that's really where we want to bring in the collaboration here between the pharmacy, nursing and medicine and try and work that one through. The storytelling, it actually forms a book for themselves, really, uh, and a digital book, so that it will help them from the transition from being a student, documenting what they have learned and what they have done all the time, and when they take it across into their professional practice. So the transition from student into professional practice is very important with this and for us as well. Also, we have an opportunity here to formatively assess and summatively assess. That is whether we're assessing of practice, but generally for practice. We want understanding here to be um, evaluated more than anything else. And also, as well, we're, what, how we got about looking at the particular uh, uh, learning technology aspect of it, or the technological aspect of it, we've also worked very closely in UCC with the Learning Technology Unit, and they have also come on board and helped us with this. And this has been part of the building foundation that we've got UCC uh, as, a, as an entire 
institution have now come on board with us and are very much behind us for this particular project. Um, and that's what we've been spending our time doing, is trying to get the foundations for this particular project going. Because having gone through the literature, which we've gone through quite a bit of it, in relation to the implementation of portfolios, it is so, so important that we actually have institutional buy-in, so to speak, so that we can actually carry this forward and that it will be sustainable and it will continue into the future. Uh, and that's what we have to look at, because we, we're getting the funding from the National Forum, but there's no point in getting the funding uh, and putting it into a big project if it's going to flop at the end. We need it so that it's going to continue and be sustainable. And I suppose from a nursing perspective, we have also been in contact as well with our national body, the Nursing Midwifery and um, Board of Ireland, and uh, in contact with the uh, Chief Nursing Officer there. And as we are bringing a new curriculum in very, very shortly, it's due to be published either July, August, direction. Uh, we're going to have another curriculum coming in, but as we have that, uh, the Chief Nursing Officer is very much in favour and kind of sees this as the way forward is an electronic portfolio. So this is, uh, reading through some of the literature, nursing are not at the forefront of this, they haven't been for a number of years, but they're catching up and they're getting there. And this is from Australian literature as well as UK and Canadian literature. So we're looking at it from that perspective. So. Going back again, I didn't finish off about the learning technologists that we have in UCC. Um, this lady has helped us with this in the sense that she has actually looked at e-portfolios, compared, contrasted, evaluated their technological input and impact, and we have looked then at the criteria we wanted ourselves with the archiving and the linking and the storytelling and all of that, and we've come up with the one that we want to use at the moment is PebblePad, is what we're looking at at the moment. That seems to be the one that has fitted into the, the criteria that we're looking towards. So that involves license, licensing and all of that, so Henry is going to talk more to that in a moment in relation to that. So three minutes, no problem. So in relation, we've got competency mapping for staff and scientists, and this, I suppose, really comes from the pharmacy perspective of things with the competency mapping. But again, as I said before, we're going to have the competencies, the e-portfolio, and the digital resources as well. All of these are going to be embedded in this particular e-portfolio. And I'm going to hand over to Henry and let him complete the presentation for you. Thank you. Um, this just shows that uh, we're working with UL uh, ITT with, with some ideas and agreement. Um, we're going to evaluate the portfolio, not just looking at usage, but looking at, at tutor views and student views as well. So student involvement, yes, we did. We had a group, and exactly as Divna found, do they want, in, uh, uh, sorry, a group of four pharmacy, four nursing, four medical students, um, and in fact, the medical students felt bullied by the senior nurses, the nurses felt that they couldn't talk to the doctors, and the pharmacists didn't know what either of them did. <laughs> so there, there, there is a kind of a gap in communication and, and understanding between professions. You can read there, essentially, it isn't very good news. Yes, they'd love it. Do they get it? No, they don't. Um, quality of placements, huge variety. Didn't really want to criticize in case it, it helped their assessment. Um, third med. Do you have any learning logs? No, we don't. I went to curriculum committee the next day. Yes, they do. Well, they haven't seen them. They don't use them. Um, interprofessional learning. Yes, we'd like it, uh, but it doesn't happen. Um, and so we're hoping to develop um, various um, in partnership uh, connections with that. So what are the three things? We've built a national network, network to identify gaps and present solutions. And we're hoping to publish the first shared competency document very shortly, well, in six months, a template for development of institutional uh, memoranda of understanding um, and recommendations for use of e-portfolios and how to best get the use out of them. We're hoping to develop sustainable models of IPL. And of course, we're already in communication with NUI Galway. Um, and developing digital resources, we've got an instructional de designer who is helping us with this to be a little bit whizzy, a little bit um, more modern, and of course our student panel are helping along the way. Um, dissemination, yes. Professional bodies, yes. HEA, we're going to publish and we're going to signpost. And thank you.